the Anaheim Angels and the Texas Rangers have each played 155 games this season. Both teams have won 83. Both teams have just seven left to play. Both teams want to win the American League West, but only one team will. The first of three between the Angels and Rangers is next. Welcome to Edison International Field of Anaheim for an American League Western Showdown on Fox Sports West. Tonight, the two Western leaders meet. It's the Texas Rangers and the Anaheim Angels, and a crowd of near 40,000 is expected for tonight's first game of a three-game series. And just seven games remain for both of these ball clubs, and Texas and Anaheim are locked up with records of 83 and 72. And hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is the skipper, Sparky Anderson. And what a weekend it was. On Saturday, the Angels win, the Rangers lose. On Sunday, same situation. Angels win, Rangers lose. What makes it interesting, on Friday, after the Angels lost, went two games back, you told me I wouldn't be surprised if on Monday these two clubs are even. And here you go. Only time I've been right in all the years. <laughs> I, I really believe that. I told you, I said, you know, in two days, this thing's going to be locked up again. This is the way it goes because this is a fight for your life. And when your life's on the line, funny things happen. Well, we talked with the Angels skipper Terry Collins about being in a pennant chase. And he said these kinds of situations are what you dream about. I haven't been dreaming about much because I'm not sleeping that much. But, uh, you know, this is what you play for for me. This is what it comes down to. I don't think you get into professional baseball without wanting to be in a pennant race, without wanting to be in po getting a chance to be in postseason. Uh, so I want our guys to realize that, hey, this is, this, is where, this is what every player in this league wants to do. And right now I know there's a lot of teams that trade places with us uh, in, in these next seven days. So just enjoy it and go out and play hard. And Terry Collins says tonight he will go with everyone, including an injured player, Darren Erstead, who will start tonight, bat fifth, and play first base. Our Alexis profile, though, is on the starting pitchers, and it will be Steve Sparks, only one loss since June 16th, against Todd Stottlemyre, who had his best performance as a Ranger against the Angels this past Wednesday. And the Sluggers will be out tonight. Jim Edmonds has been on fire in September. But Juan Gonzalez leads the American League in RBIs, and he plays for Texas. Fox Sports West presents Angels Baseball, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fare so low, you have the freedom to go places. By your Southern California Lexus Dealers Association. By Hoover. Nobody gets the dirt like Hoover. Nobody. And by Original Coors. Pure and simple. The last real beer. Welcome back to Edison International Field of Anaheim for the first of a three-game series between the Anaheim Angels and Texas Rangers. Seven games remaining and two teams tied for first place with records of 83 and 72. Terry Collins against Johnny Oates. And to start this game, Steve Sparks, a knuckleball pitcher from Texas against Tom Goodwin. Steve Sparks from near Houston, Texas where he and his family live, and he comes inside to Tom Goodwin and misses two balls and no strikes. Goodwin has great speed, hitting 289 on the season with just two home runs, but his job to get on base. And he goes after the next pitch and puts it foul. Two and one. By the way, Steve, we have to excuse Dave Phillips, the third base umpire, if he does anything wrong tonight. He ran into a 24-year-old player on the collision at first, He's got two black eyes. He's bruised up all over the top. His <laughs> legs are all bruised. His knees are scraped. I said, this poor guy, he can't even walk. There's a fastball that comes to the inside corner. The count goes two and two. Well, Phillips will be at third base, and he is healthy, he says. Ted Barrett is calling the balls and strikes. Durwood Merrill at first base, and Dale Scott at second. Knuckleball comes inside and pushes Goodwin off the plate three and two. My man Doerwitz at first. That means he'll be behind home tomorrow. He's my man. Fastball ripped to center field. A long run for Jim Edmonds. Will he get there? Yes, he does. 
He has just played brilliant defense this weekend against the Seattle Mariners and now to start this game against the Texas Rangers. Here's the Rangers lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Tom Goodwin will leave things off. He's followed by McLemore, then Rusty Greer. Rusty is 10 for 18 against Sparks. Juan Gonzalez just about as hot. Six hits, three home runs. Will Clark, then Yvonne Rodriguez hitting 326, fourth best in the American League. Steven Zeal and Clayton goes seven through nine. And there's a fastball to McLemore. Mark has two knees that have really been bothering him. And because of that, his average has suffered. Just six for his last 36 in the last 10 games and a knuckleball taking low. Chad Cruder is catching Steve Sparks tonight because of Phil Nevin's ankle injury. Fastball hit in the ground, second base. Randy Pilardi boots it, and McLemore will be safe. The Angels defended so well in coming back against the Seattle Mariners, but that ball right in for him, it hit him on the heel. Actually, it hit him on the heel, and he knocked it away with the back of his glove. You know, you try to get it, and he knocked it away. That one thing about Randy, though, things like that, that's not going to bother him. A lot of guys are upset. It won't bother Randy. Well, now Sparks has to go through the two big guns, Greer and Gonzalez combined, 16 for 33 against Sparks with four home runs. Steve throws high. One ball, no strikes. What I like about Chad is Chad is a fine receiver and good thrower. Chad is what we call a bona fide catcher. That knuckleball misses two balls and no strikes. And you might remember Chad Kruder caught Dennis Springer last year, so he has the knowledge and the experience of catching a knuckleball pitcher, and that is not easy. Knuckleball bounces and controlled by Kruder. I had Chad at Detroit. The one thing that he can do exceptionally well, now maybe he's not Rodriguez, you know, let's face it, there ain't too many of them, but this guy is a bona fide major league catcher. Greer takes, it's three balls and one strike. Steve Sparks said earlier today the one thing he must do to be successful against Texas in the likes of Greer and later Gonzalez, get ahead. Well, he's fallen behind three balls, one strike. He has Erstad at first base. Darren making the start tonight despite that left hamstring problem. His knuckleball has been inconsistent, and he can pitch behind in the count. Fastball is ripped foul. Now it's full three and two. Not when you're throwing at 77 miles an hour. Even, even in my heyday, I can handle that. <laughs> Not much beyond it, but I can handle that. Well, there's a guy who can eat up some 77 mile an hour fastballs, and that is Juan Gonzalez, who is waiting next. But right now, Sparks has to deal with Greer. Max Lamore at first base. He goes. The pitch is swung on, hitting the hole left field base hit. McLemore turns second and goes to third, and Texas has something cooking here to start this game. Beautifully executed by Greer because Dee Sarcina was covering second base when McLemore was running on 3 2. See, he just took his time going. He wasn't uh, he getting a good jump, but look how he cut that ball. He cut that ball the other way. So the Angels hoping that error does not come back to haunt them. As Juan Gonzalez comes to the plate, that will shift both the outfield and the infield towards left field because Gonzalez is a great ball hitter and has had considerable success against the Angels in his career. 44 home runs this year. He is also leading the American League and runs driven in with 154. I, you know, according to baseball rules, I think those are very good statistics. <laughs> <laughs> he is just five RBIs of having the most in the American League in one season since 1949. Good knuckleball, one and one, that will even the count. Last time uh, an American League player had more than 150 RBIs in one season. You have to go back to 49 when Ted Williams and Vern Stevens both had 159 for the Boston Red Sox. Terry Collins. 
Well, the Angels throw to first base, trying to hold Greer. Rusty does not go on the pitch. is swung on, and there's a base hit up the middle. McLemore will score, and Texas takes a 1-0 lead. ball that hit too much. It just stayed up there. That knuckleball just stays right up there. See, it doesn't do nothing. He's very lucky that you can thank, uh, be very pleased that that ball didn't leave the ballpark. Chavez was waiting for it to come down, and it never did. It just got the top of it, slammed it into center field for a base hit, so Texas takes the early advantage on Anaheim. Now Will Clark. Cruder takes that fastball. I mean, he may have been crossed up. I, he's going out to talk to him, and he usually meets him and says, hey, you know what signal I put down? <laughs> well, Terry Collins was telling me before the ball game, as you see the base runners have just won out, that knuckleball pitchers have to have great confidence because if they don't, there's no way they'll play the game because even when they don't have their best knuckleball, they have to throw it. There's a knuckleball and a good one, one and one. Goodwin flied out. McLemore reached on Velarde's error. Greer singled to left. Gonzalez singled him in. There's Chad Cruder. Two balls and one strike. Sparks has won nine games this year, lost three. But coming off a very poor outing, one of his worst of the year, against these Texas Rangers last Thursday, bombed in just one and two-thirds innings. That knuckleball drifts low. Now it's three and one to Will Clark. Marcel Latchman a little concerned. It's a fastball right here. He wants it away from him. He didn't get it away. And Clark lines it to Erstad. He'll have no other play, but still a marvelous play by Darren Erstad coming back from that leg injury. See, now, people will say, well, we'll pretend. We'll pretend that Erstad goes over for them. Before anything happens, we'll just pretend that. I told you before, when he is in the game, he will do something to help your club. What would be the difference if he went three for four and drove in no runs or prevented a run with that play? You see the difference? He does something to always help your club. And that's why Urstead, for me, they can talk all they want. It's about as good a player as you could go get. And there's a chance that that would, would have scored two runs because hit by a left hand, it was hooking and could have twisted down that right field line and scoring both Greer from second base and Gonzalez from first base. Here's Yvonne Rodriguez. And I love to watch a player that has that type of uh, effect on the game, whether it's offense or defense. You have that effect on the game. Rodriguez has that kind of effect on the game. Offensively and defensively. There's a knuckleball lifted foul. It will be out of play. And the count goes one ball and one strike. Well, I call Rodriguez Pudge. I call him a defensive weapon. Those are weapons. And just imagine, they're both, what, 23, 24 years old. Uh, they haven't even had a chance to grow up yet. Knuckleball shot to right field. Garrett Anderson makes the catch. And Texas is denied scoring more than the one run they get off Steve Clark. We'll be right back with the bottom of the first inning after this. Bottom of the first inning in Anaheim. The Rangers take the early 1-0 lead. Right now, let's check out the line of the Terry Collins trip to home plate. He will lead things off with Greg Jeffries, who is playing with both an elbow problem and a hamstring problem. Randy Bellardi is hurting with an elbow. Jim Edmonds with a wrist. Tim Salmon's left foot. Darren Erstad's left hamstring. 
Garrett Anderson, he's healthy. Chad Kruder, he's healthy. Paco Martin has had knee problems, and Gary DeSarcina, healthy. We've got three healthy guys in the lineup. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, that isn't bad <laughs> when you come out in the dugout as a manager and you say, well, let's go now. we got seven, seven to play to win it. And I got three healthy guys. <laughs> Boy, let's go. <laughs> well, here's Dodge Donalmar looking for his 14th win this year, both with St. Louis and Texas. A 3 8 earned run average. It's almost a run higher with Texas. And the first offering to Greg Jeffries is fouled off. Greg has always done well against Todd, both in their days when he was facing him as a Philadelphia Philly against Stottlemyre as a Cardinal, and earlier when he was a Kansas City Royal and Todd was a Toronto Blue Jay. Fastball rides high. Matter of fact, Greg Jeffries' first home run as an Angel only home run came against Stottlemyre last week. I don't mean he was exactly like him, but to try to make a picture for people, Jeffries reminds me of Peter Edward Rose. I mean, he's a tough little bugger, I'll tell you that. Concentrates in every pitch and has a good swing on every single pitch. And he's always mad. He's yeah. always mad at himself. He's not mad at other people. You watch it. He's always punishing himself. That's, I, I like to see a player that way. Stottlemyre tries to dot the outside corner, but just does miss the count's full three and two. There's Johnny Oates. His club has gone first place to second place. Now Jeffries with a ground ball to Royce Clayton. Rose is up and throws out Greg by a step and a half. The Texas defense has suffered. They have Todd Zeal at third base. He's made 12 errors this year. Royce Clayton has made seven since coming over from St. Louis. Mark McLemore has been solid at second and Lee Stevens is at first for Will Clark because he's playing with a broken toe. Rusty Greer, Tom Goodwin, Juan Gonzalez in the outfield. Rodriguez is the best in baseball at catching. Just 26 years old, and he's already won six gold gloves. That ball line sharply in the alley, left center field. Ferrari will have at least two. Goodwin made a great save to keep him at two. It's going to be so much baseball played here in the next three days. If people miss this, they're crazy. Now, I'm going to tell you something. They're going to see as much baseball as you want to see wrapped up in three games. Now, look at this play. You know, I'm going to tell you something now. You're going to see some things before this thing's over. You said to yourself, well, you've already seen Urshed play. We've seen Anderson, and we've seen Gooden. It was like that on Saturday night. Great contest. The Angels won at 5-3, coming from three runs down to beat Seattle. Great defense, clutch pitching. And Terry Collins also got those clutch hitters coming through by Matt Wallback and Craig Loss late. With Jim Edmonds, he takes inside. Jim Edmonds with 24 home runs. He has driven in 88 runs this year, and he has been on fire in September hitting 364. Four home runs this month, 17 RBIs. Well, they try a pickoff play at second base, almost went into center field plate and saves it nicely, but Rodriguez will throw behind every single runner, picked up two angels in Thursday's game. I've always said about him, he likes to throw so much, he'll throw the bases where there ain't no runner. <laughs> just, just to throw. He loves to throw. Well, the count has gone to Jim Edmonds, two balls and one strike, with Rodriguez waiting for Stottlemyre's pitch. Velarde represents the tying run. Edmonds takes low, it's three and one. And Jim wanted to say hi tonight to John and Devin Willard of Diamond Bar, the great Angels fans who couldn't be at the game tonight, and Jim sends his best wishes and says he will play with you in his heart tonight. So hello to John and Devin Willard. Fastball stays high, Edmonds is on. The Angels have two on with one out and Tim Salmon coming to the plate. And Johnny Oates knows he got the best from Todd Stottlemyre last week when Stottlemyre beat the Angels with eight innings. 
Dottlemeyer does throw a splitter occasionally, but emotions is what you've seen in the past from him. And Dick Bosman talked to his dad, Mel Stottlemyre, about that. Yeah, and you know what? That's, to me, his emotions are great, except I've seen him where he gets at that pitch where he kills himself. And uh, he has to be at a, at a pitch emotionally, but he gets too high sometimes. Well, there's a good changeup that he starts out, Tim Salmon. Salmon was thinking first pitch, fastball, because he walked Edmonds. He wants to get a strike in. Comes Ab back changeup. Absolutely, and he's mad at himself, too. Tim, you see his numbers for the year, but you talk about Texas, and he's really been good. The runners go, and the throw is not in time. Velarde steals third base. He stole that completely off Todd Stoudemire, who completely forgot about him. Now, what did I say back just a little bit ago? The three days you're going to see these things. Look at this here. He gets a great jump, and he knows he can steal third on him. I mean, Rodriguez can't do no more than back around and fight. And Salmon takes low. So the count has gone two and one to Jim Salmon. Scott O'Meyer going for the strikeout. With St. Louis, he won nine games, and when he was traded to Texas, he was ranked fourth in the National League in strikeouts with 147. So he can get his strikeout. Tim takes his strike, two and two. Salmon would love to get it in the air. And deep. I wish fans were able to feel what Johnny Oates is feeling now and what Terry Collins is feeling. One's begging for a base hit or a run here, and the other's begging for a ground ball double play. <laughs> That's low. Three balls, two strikes. Stottlemyre against Salmon. Johnny Oates' team lost the last two to the Oakland Athletics in Arlington. Terry Collins. Angels won the last two against the Seattle Mariners by just two runs each night, Saturday and Sunday. Velarde at third base, Edmonds first base. The pitch misses, the bases are loaded. And here comes Darren Erstead. How about this? The kid who has missed 27 of the team's last 42 games because of hamstring problems and it is still not healthy will come up. And it wouldn't surprise me if he took him deep. Well, there are about 40,000 fans here in Anaheim who are hoping for just that. He started against Texas, got one base hit, then they had to take him out of the game because he was limping noticeably, running up the first base line. Breaker misses ball one. Scott O'Meyer, an emotional pitcher. And that's one thing pitching coach Dick Bosman talked with his dad about, Mel Scott O'Meyer, when Todd came in and tried so hard that he was pressing. Good curveball. One and one. You can see her step ready for that heater. He was ready for it, and if he gets it, He'll hurt you. The bases are loaded. First half swings and misses. It's one and two. Well, look at that. Kid and you remind yourself of Bear Bryant's comment, there's no substitute for guts. He swings and misses, striking out, and there's a big strikeout for Scott Lemire in the first inning. Well, let's face it now. He made two pitches in a row, and they're both in the same spot as this. That ball is a breaking ball in the outside corner.
that's a huge out for Stottlemyre with the bases loaded. Now Garrett Anderson must come through after Erstad strikes out. Anderson had one hit on the road on this homestand against the Seattle Mariners, but it was a big one driving in a critical run in Saturday's win. As the base hit the tie of the game of three. The Angels would go on to win 5-3. Shot down the left field line, but now Garrett's in the hole. Nothing in two. Garrett does not have great numbers against Dottlemeyer, but one of the hits, a home run. Sparks is waiting. Down one nothing. Garrett taps it back up the middle. Clayton has it, goes to first in time, ending the inning. The Angels threaten but do not score, and they leave the bases loaded against Donald Meyer in the first. If you've enjoyed 1999 season, seats are already being sold. Deposits are being accepted. Please call 714. 940-2159 for more information. The Angels theme is red, white, and blue until the race is through. So they're asking Angel fans to wear these next three nights as they take on these Texas Rangers. Steve Sparks comes inside to the number seven hitter in the Texas lineup, Lee Stevens, who was drafted as an angel, has hit 17 home runs this year. And how's that offering back? One and one. <laughs> Knuckleball fouled back. One and two. You know, I'm not too sure that they don't have quite a bit of thunder in that lineup. When you got Stevens hitting seven <laughs> and Zio hitting eight, now I, I think there's a little thunder going around. Well, they do have it with Greer, Gonzalez, and Clark, three athletes with over 100 RBIs. Sparks comes back and tries to get Lee Stevens with that high fastball. It misses two and two. There's Zio. Last year, he had 31 home runs for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Ball stroke towards left field and deep and foul. But Texas always has been a high scoring team this year. 288 team batting average, first in the American League, almost six runs per game. That's second. On base percentage, that's almost 36. Those are numbers you'd love to see. I I think without being an Einstein. <laughs> They might be a little short, and the guy's throwing it from 60 feet, 6 inches. Well, Johnny Oates has had the off. There's a base hit to right field, so Stevens is on. Garrett gets there quickly and will hold Lee to just one base. They are hitting Steve Sparks hard to start this ball game, much like they did in Texas this past Wednesday. Sparks was talking about the pressure and he said he's been pitching for a job all year long so he feels like he's dealt with pressure all year. Here's Todd Zeal. 18 home runs combined with the Dodgers Marlins and Rangers 90 RBIs. That's a strong year. That's what I say. That's the old funder. Knuckleball in there strike one. Todd now 33 years of age from Van Nuys, California. Went to UCLA where he was a catcher. And a very good one hitting 331 with 26 home runs for the Bruins. He's quickly behind the count, nothing in two. And this is exactly where Sparks was hoping he would be, but behind almost every single batter in that first inning. Yeah, he has to be ahead. And he's not ahead. Then even when he throws his knuckleball, he don't throw it with that real break on it. Ooh. Pruder thought he had strike three, delayed his throw back. Oh, 
Knuckleball hit in the air and deep to right center field, and that will go up against the wall. Coming around to score is Lee Stevens. Here's the throw by Randy Velarde, and it, it is. It comes away. It is safe. And going to third in the play is Todd Zeal. I'm going to tell you something. What a great relay that was to Velarde, and what a great throw it was by Velarde, and he was out at home plate. Right now, the Texas Rangers have quieted this crowd of near 40,000 with the way they have been hitting Steve Sparks. Now watch Edmonds. He hits him perfect right there, and what a throw. I mean, he's out. He blocked him well, too. Really blocked him well. So now Royce Clayton comes up with a runner at third base. Stevens starts the inning with a single. Zeal doubles him home. Angels have two errors right now in this game. One by Velarde. There's a ground ball. Second base. Randy holds the runner. Throws out Clayton. One big out. Steven scores in the play. Zeal gets the RBI, but goes to third base in the air, and the catcher, Chad Cruder, as the ball came up on Chad, he applied the tag, and then the ball rolled away. Here is Tom Goodwin, first time up wide to deep center field. The Sparks looking for his first strikeout, and he needs one right here. Goodwin takes a high strike. And Sparky, Tom Goodwin against a good fastball will strike out. But you back off on speed and he'll make contact. Yeah, if if you've got a 90 fastball and above, you can strike him out. Knuckleball, strike two. So now Sparks has Goodwin on the defense. But remember, he had Stevens 0-2, and Stevens rocked him for a base hit. Texas has taken an early 2-0 lead. So the Angels must come from behind again, but they've done that well this year. He swings and misses striking out, so a big strikeout early in this ball game. This is a good one, though. You see that one? The bottom just drops right out of it. Maybe he's getting the feel for it now because he certainly was not early. Line drive hits in the first inning, and they were line drive outs as well by Clark and Rodriguez when they made out. And to start this one, Stevens and Zeal hit him hard, but then Clayton and Goodwin suffered against some really good knuckleballs, and he quickly gets in front of McLemore, nothing in one. McLemore grounded one to Randy Velarde's first time up, but Randy booted it for an error, and McLemore would later score. Chad made a nice play to grab that one, or Zeal scores from third. Well, he's blocking it nicely. He's well, really he's, good. he's just a good catch, Steve. He's a fine receiver. That's two now as he slid outside to corral a knuckleball. Now it takes one right in the dirt. Knuckleball in there, two and two. So the Angels need one more strike to get out of second inning trouble. They're down two nothing to Texas. That gets away from Pruder, and now Zeal will score, and it's three nothing Rangers. This one shot up. Watch this. Do that and hit right off of the heel of the glove. Right off of the edge of the glove. 
Looked yeah. like Chad was waiting for it to come down. Now McLemore hits a ground ball right back to Sparks, but Steve Sparks would rock for three runs in the first two innings. And the Angels must come back against their talented pitcher in Todd Stottlemyre. Against the New York Yankees. That was a good pitch by Stottlemyre in for strike one against Chad Cooter, but it's really a wonderful moment, and I like the way Cal did it. He didn't have a lot of pomp and circumstance, didn't take away from the pennant races or what McGuire and Sosa are doing. Just said, if you just scratch off my name, I think I'm going to call it a night. And the Yankees, when the first out was made, came out, half step of the dugout, and applauded for him. And very beautiful moment. Yeah, but you know Cal, and that's him. Cal's a guy with class like McGuire and Sosa. They're class people. 16 years he had played baseball without missing a game from 1982 to 1998. It's been a great year for baseball. And it has been an exciting year for these Angels. Swing and a miss, and Stottlemyer has his stri second strikeout. Boy, he looks good. He has been very, very sharp his last three games now. You make pitches like that, and you've got a chance to win. Last three games against Minnesota, Tampa Bay, and Anaheim, he has given up just seven runs now in 24 innings. Here is Paco Martin playing third base tonight for the Yankees, and he goes after the first offering, strike one. Paco hit 300 last year for the Chicago White Sox, 350 the year before, but only hitting 222 with the Angels. Just his third start in September. And he flips it foul to Stottlemyre very quickly in front, nothing in two. I still believe he's one of those guys that's really a usable player on the club. He knows his job. He knows how to go about doing it. He's not a complainer. I, I think he's a very usable player. Oh, no question, because he can play second, short, third base. He's played the outfield for Terry Collins at times this year. And he swings and misses, and Stottlemyre has struck out three of the last four angels that he's faced. Look at this pitch. Now, that's what I said. You keep making pitches like that. you got to get a lot of people out. Two outs in the second inning. Stottlemyre loaded the bases for the Angels in the first with just one out, but came back to strike out Erstad and got Anderson on a ground ball to short. Now, Gary D. Sarcina. Fastball hit foul out of play. Strike one. And Texas really still considered the favorite to win the West. I mean, Terry Collins was saying he picks up the paper every day and reads how the Rangers are better than the Angels. And then he says, well, we'll see. Johnny Oates says he picks up the newspaper and reads how the Rangers should be 10 games in front. And he says, we'll see. There's a ground ball hit to third. Zio has it. Throws out Gary and Stottlemyre with a great second inning. We'll be back for the third with the Angels. Rangers leading by three. This player has one consecutive game, Sparky. Starting a new streak. Look at him. Is he cute? And his daddy can tell him, in the 20 years from now, you were there. That final week, a marvelous playoff in the American League West between the Texas Rangers and the Anaheim Angels. Steve Sparks goes against Rusty Greer, single to left field his first time. Knuckleball, pop foul, and it will be out of play. A ball hit to Gary D. Sarcina and Rusty Greer is out. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Juan Gonzalez came into this game with 300 home runs, and he's only 28 years old. One of the youngest players ever to hit 300 that early. Six youngest, as a matter of fact. As you look at Jimmy Fox, Ken Griffey Jr., Mel Ott, Eddie Matthews, and Mickey Mantle that hit his 300 this weekend. And now has 44 this season. But he has pounded the Angels in his past. He has 25 home runs against Anaheim. And he's an RBI machine. Drove in number 155 in the first inning with a single up the middle to uh, score Mark McLemore from third base. And Spark, you've had a chance to watch him develop. You thought he got too big at one time, and now he has backed off the weights. And Boy, look at that shot to deep center field. Jim Edmonds going way back. He's at the wall. He's got it. A scare for Steve Sparks, but it is just a long out, the second out of the third. Yeah, he got himself too big. Uh, that happens on those weights sometimes. People, oh, this fly ball here, he just didn't get it. What he did was that ball was hit out towards the end, see? As strong as he is, though. <laughs> Look at the carry he got out of it. He is so strong. Edmonds getting a good jump, reading the wall, and making the catch. Now Will Clark. He lined out to Darren Erstad at first base. Texas with a run in the first inning. And two in the last. His best season since 1991, and he's done it on a broken toe. Will Clark broke his big toe on his right foot. You can see that wrapping. He's actually wearing a size 10 and a half on the right foot and his size 9 and a half on the left foot. He says it, it doesn't hurt him that much to run. It just hurts to stop. Oh, <laughs> I, I imagine when you pull up and... So he's got that shin guard to protect just in case he fouls another ball off of it. But he cracked it right down the, the middle of the bone. Three balls, two strikes. But this guy, a great competitor. Take a look at him with his eyes. Does he look like you want to meet him in the alley? They look say this is his Neusler look. Why Neusler? That's his middle name. I had so much fun with him. The last two years that I managed, 94 and 95, we used to talk and talk. I said, who do you think you're kidding with that tough one? <laughs> A couple of intense first basemen there, Will Clark and Darren Erstead as Yvonne Rodriguez steps in. He lined out to end the first inning. Texas scored one in the first, two in the second. They're in the third with two out and Will Clark at first base. Knuckleball surrounded by Kruder. His knuckleball is moving. And I remember talking to Dennis Springer last year about how he threw the knuckleball, and he just said, well, I just look at the strike zone as being a box and try and throw it inside the box. Well, Dennis has been missing that box this year. Yes, he has. That is such a tough pitch to throw. There hasn't been many that have been successful. Bill Negro, the greatest. Brother Joe, outstanding as well. Wilhelm. Big swing and miss on that knuckleball. Now the count evens. One ball, one strike to Yvonne Rodriguez. But Terry Collins saying, you've got to have courage to throw it. Because even when you don't have it, you still have to throw it. Some other pitchers can say, well, a curve isn't working tonight. I'll go with the slider. Knuckleball tap towards Sparks. He has it. Throw to first in time. Inning is over. The Rangers do not score. And the Angels will send up in the third. Jeffrey, Velarde, and Jim Edmonds. Had at Edison International Field as the theme this week is red, white, and blue until the race is through. And there are still plenty of great seats available for all three games against these Texas Rangers. 
tomorrow. The Angels send Chuck Finley to the mound against Rick Helling. And there's Greg Jeffries with a ground ball to Mark McLemore. One out. Saturday at 12.30 on Fox Sports West, Navy takes on Sean King and the Green Wave. Then the Rice Owls meet Heisman hopeful Ricky Williams and the Longhorns. Then Darryl Bush leads Baylor against number 15 ranked Colorado. It all starts Saturday at 12.30 on Fox Sports West. Ricky Williams might be a Heisman hopeful, but he's been roughed up by UCLA and now Kansas State. Here's Randy Velarde. Velarde went to a Texas school, Lubbock Christian, where he was an All-American and set all kinds of records. Stottlemyre has been right there on first pitch strikes. Sparks has not. Well, he's throwing well. And Steve just didn't have good control of the knuckleball early and was throwing it right over the heart of the plate. And not only were they knocking it for base hits, but even the outs were hit hard. Good curveball. One and two. Knock past Stottlemyre. McLemore having to raise in. His throw is just in time. Two outs. McLemore made a good play on that ball. I... He took his time. He knew he had him. He just had to make sure he caught the ball. And he got him by a half a step. So now with two outs, the Angels had Jim Edmonds to the plate. He walked his first time up. The Angels had a threat going in that first inning, but could not score. They loaded the bases after Velarde doubled. Edmonds walked. Salmon then walked, but Erstad struck out, and Anderson grounded out to end the inning. Look what Jim has done against Texas this year. He is four for 14 against Stottlemyre, who quickly jumps in front. Two strikes. Oh, he has been sharp. Best game with the Rangers came against the Angels last week. Eight innings. Gave up just one run, one walk, struck out seven. Jim flips it foul. I tell you one thing, he's throwing balls right on the black or two inches of the outside corner. Very good pitcher. Great competitor who was in the last year of his contract with St. Louis. And many feel that he'll be back with the Cardinals next year. He's retired seven in a row. Edmonds pops up. It could be eight in a row as Goodwin comes under it. And Tom will make the catch. And Stottlemyre gets the Angels very quickly in the third. We head to the fourth. Stephen Zeal and Clayton come up for the Rangers. Texas has a 3-0 lead, and you see that man way out in center field. That is John Staff, 47-year-old freelance graphic artist, a longtime Angels fan, and he wanted to show his support for the team and motivate other people to show theirs. He says he's not going to come down until the Angels clinch the playoffs. He called KLOS Radio and told them he wanted to do this, and the radio station called the Angels for approval and to coordinate. Today is day number four, and... John said the Angels have been feeding him. They have a hose up there so he can take a shower. All he needs is a bar of soap, and he is. He's in Fat City. I bet you he sneaks home at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, here is Lee Stevens, who caused problems for Steve Sparks his first time up to lead off the second inning, ripping a single to right field after falling behind in the count. Nothing in two. He really has straightened out his stroke since leaving the Angels when he had a really long swing. He had a long swing, and you could pitch him up. Oh, so easy. He went over to Japan, and that's where he got the abbreviated stroke that he has now where he holds it close to his, to his body, and then will bring it back as the pitcher delivers home. He was a teammate of Hideo Nomo in 1994 with the Kintetsu Buffaloes. 
and he played in the same league as Shigatoshi Hasegawa, so he probably knows Shiggy a little bit. Went up to the knuckler, flips it in the air, right field, a long run for Garrett Anderson, but he gets there for the first down. The Angels on Fox Sports West are brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. You either have it in you or you don't. Life is a sport, drink it up. By Cooper Tires. And by your Southern California Chevrolet dealers. Seal and he takes a knuckleball for strike one. Zeal almost hit one out of the ballpark his first time up, doubling off the wall in right field. And he had only one home run in his previous 40 games, but has hit two against the Angels in the last week. He was hitting 186 the last two weeks coming into this game. That has to be hard moving from team to team to team in one season. I think it'd be a little difficult. The line drive that is past Erstad. Sparks will cover, and Velarde's play is not in time. Zeal beats it out. Do you like the way Joe would let him know, didn't he? Immediately. Watch this play here now. If Velarde throws he in the bag, the he's bag. out. Yeah. That's tough, boy. You're running, hitting the running target, too. See, he missed. He's safe. And Durwood let him know. He doesn't fool around. So one out, one on. Angels down 3-0. They must come back again, something they have been very familiar with this year. 44 of the Angels' 83 wins are come from behind victories. Clayton taking a knuckler that rolls inside. You might remember the Angels going to New York. First three games they won, they were down 2 nothing, 4 nothing, 2 nothing, and those three wins at Yankee Stadium. Tim Salmon came through in the clutch in New York. Now he's got to come through the clutch against a very good pitcher in Todd Stadlemeyer, who seems to be on his game early. Zeal first, one out. Two and zero. Stottlemyer has opened with three shutout innings. He's roughed up a little bit in the first inning, but left the bases loaded for Anaheim in the first. He's been perfect since, and he's retired eight in a row. Right center field. Edmonds a long run, and Jim will see it go off the wall. Zeal will be held at third. Clayton goes to second with one out. You know, that ball carried much more than I thought it would. I didn't believe that ball was going to carry that far. The ball just kept carrying and carrying. Zeal had to wait up to make sure that Jim Edmonds could not catch it. Marcel Latchman, meantime, will go for a visit with Steve Sparks. Do you know where the mistake is made? Now, see, that's where base running, where you're totally wrong. He got one out. If he had no outs, it wouldn't matter. He goes all the way down to second and stands there and watches. You think if Edmonds catches that ball on the run going that way, he's going to bounce off that fence. You mean to tell me he can turn around and throw him out at first? Zeal has to be standing on second when the ball lands, then he scores. And you know, this, this, those are the things as a manager that make you angry because what if this guy doesn't deliver for you? You've lost a run because of base run. Because he could have scored had he been on oh second base. Oh my goodness, that's where you're supposed to be. You score easy. Right now it's Texas three and Johnny Oates trying to blow this game open right now as Tom Goodwin will come to the plate. He beat the Angels on Thursday with an eighth inning clutch base hit to right center field. He's 0 for 2 in this game flying out striking out and Cruder corrals it again as it breaks low and away. 
Rangers lead the American League in team batting average and also with runners in scoring position at 301. And they've got two on the base pass. Zeal and Clayton with just one out. That ball's wrapped to right field. Should be deep enough to score a run. Anderson makes the catch. Here comes Zeal. The throw will go to third base, and it's cut off by DeSarcina. A run scores to make it 4 nothing Texas. Terry Collins knows that uh, the Angels starting pitcher Steve Sparks may not have it tonight. You saw Jeff Juden up warming up in the Angels bullpen. Anaheim needs to keep it close and try and hope that they can come back in this first of a three game series. Chuck Finley goes against Rick Helling tomorrow night. It'll be another 705 game and tickets are available. Tickets available at the Edison Field box office or charged by phone by calling 714-663-9000. Knock the ball in there. One and one. He's throwing some, some very good ones, but they're about 50-50. Can't be 50-50. No, 50 is not good. Two balls and one strike. Terry Collins had exactly what he wanted. His club even with Texas to start this homestand. Well, that knuckleball just knocked down. It didn't break very much at all. Clayton at third base. Angels had a similar situation. Two out. Ball jumped off Cruder's glove to a route a run to score and Todd Zeal in the second inning. Lamore flips it out of play, and the count has gone to three and two. Marcel Latchman has so many wounded pitchers. Sparks coming off of an elbow problem a year ago. Last two starts against Texas, he has been rocked. He won his first two, and last Wednesday, or last Thursday, I should say, he lost to these Rangers. Now he walks McLemore and Greer comes up and this is the part of the lineup that has just punished him in the past. Greer and Gonzalez have combined 18 for 35 now and I don't know how much longer Marcel is going to let him go. ball ball one and his real good one is a ball you know the one that's really breaking extremely good for him it's always a ball it's hard to manage a knuckleballer isn't it very tough because you just don't know when, you don't know when to go get him or what do you say when you go out to the mound throw it in there pal I never had one <laughs> <laughs> you never that's right you didn't Cincinnati and Detroit. Clayton, McLemore, good speed in the base pass. There's McLemore, and there's a base hit to left field. It's good win. McLemore goes to second. Greer comes through. It is 5 0. And that's going to do it as Terry Collins will come out. Well, Steve Sparks for the second straight start did not have it against the Texas Rangers, the most feared offense in the American League this year. And Sparks wrapped around in less than two innings last week and does not go for tonight. Steve Sparks is responsible for two runners on the base pass. He has given up now nine runs in the last two games against these Texas Rangers. Juan Gonzalez, Macklin back of the middle in the first inning to drive in the first run. Then in the third inning, two runs would come across. Todd Zia would bang one off the right field wall to score Lee Stevens from first base. And a wild pitch would score Todd Zia. 
The wild pitch was off Santee's glove with two outs. Seal came home. And Rusty Greer, for the second straight time, has gone to left field to knock in a run. So Steve Sparks goes three and two thirds innings. Gives up five runs so far, and we will have a drastic change of pace from Steve Sparks at about 65 miles an hour to Jeff Juden, who can throw it in the low 90s. Eight wins this year, a 5 8 earned run average. His job, keep it at 5 0, and hope the Angels can come back against a very good pitcher in Todd Stottlemyre. Two on, two out. Juden against Juan Gonzalez. Gonzalez has singled the center field to drive and run and fly to center field. had a very difficult road trip going one and six they were not hitting the ball well hitting just 235 averaging three and a half runs per game Their only win was against Tampa Bay they came home and lost the first game to Seattle but won the last two Gonzalez pops it up D. Sarcina says he has it and he does and we head to the bottom of the fourth. Sparks has been knocked out, giving up five runs in less than four innings. And here comes Stottlemyre. Todd Stottlemyre has been excellent in the first three innings, particularly first inning. Bases loaded one out. He strikes out Darren Erstad. Then in the second inning, strikes out Chad Cooter. He gets Paco Martin with a swing and a miss. He has three strikeouts in the ball game. He has retired eight straight Angels. And we'll see what he has done the last two starts against Anaheim, giving up just one run and three walks. Tim Salmon takes strike one. Salmon walked to load the bases his first time up. That came with one out, and the Angels down just one nothing. But Erstad strike out. Then that was followed by Garrett Anderson's round out to short. Like you said, Steve, the key to Stoudemire has been strike one, first pitch. He has thrown that first pitch strike to 12 of the 13 Angels he has faced in this game. But his location with that first pitch strike has been so outstanding because I'm sure the Angel batters, including hitting instructor Rod Crew, are saying, you know what, fellas, he's being aggressive early. So they're ready for it. His location has been so great. Now Salmon lines one into left field, and that snaps the streak of eight retired in a row. Well, we talked with skipper Terry Collins about the kid who's coming to the plate, Darren Erstad, and his playing him tonight with that wounded left hamstring. Well, I'm going to start Darren. He's run the bases. Steve, I, I really feel this way. I look at him and said, I don't. I haven't had him for three weeks or two, two and a half weeks. If I wait another five days, I may never need him. I need him right now. And if he gets hurt tonight, he gets hurt. Uh, but but anybody could. Anybody, anybody in their team could get hurt. And uh, he's a big part of our offense. We need him in the middle of our lineup to drive, help drive in some runs. And so he's in there. And here is Erstad. And immediately, Stottlemyre throws him a breaking ball. Well, Erstad told Terry Collins he's got two weeks of him being patient with his injury. Then he's going to have to shoot me to keep me off the field. The like that kind of presence motion again the curveball they're throwing nothing but breaking balls to Urshad well you got to throw him a lot of breaking balls but that's going to happen when you're still in your second year man you just watch as time goes on they'll dread the day one of these days that they don't when they're throwing breaking balls and he's hurting them so bad that'll probably be the pitch he goes home and works on it in North Dakota at an indoor cage this winter. I asked him why he doesn't stay in Southern California the offseason, and Darren simply said, Southern California's got poor ice fishing. <laughs>
He will prepare himself for 1999 though. And that ball is hit sharply but foul. And the count goes even. Two balls and two strikes. His dad struck out with the bases loaded his first time up. The first and only opportunity the Angels have had to score runs against Todd Stottlemyre. Salmon leads from first base. That ball knocked towards third. Zeal picks it up. The throw is in time to get down Erstad on a normal leg. Erstad beats that out for an infield hit, but he has to jog down to first base because of the hamstring problem. I watch him run. I promise you that he hit that ball before. He's safe so easy, it's unbelievable. Let's watch Darren run. All he's doing is... But he'll just try. That's all he can do. So the biggest problem is those first few steps out of the box. And there's a ground ball in the hole. Clayton has it. We'll have no throw. And Salmon stays put at second base wisely. So the Angels have a rally with just one out here in the fourth inning. They're not hitting the ball hard against Stoudemire. Just in the right spots. If Erstead has speed, bases might be loaded. Or Clayton could have gone to third, possibly, to get Salmon if Erstead would have reached. Well, I don't know, though. It's, uh, that was a slow ball, too, over in the hole. And Zeal had to go for it. Even I really have nobody there. Yeah, that's right. They would have had nobody at third base, and the Angels would have had the bases loaded. But Anaheim playing with a wounded baseball team. Salmon with a left foot problem. Garrett Anderson is healthy at first base, and here's Chad Kudich with a good foul. You know what? Uh, they ever thought about mounting some of these players like they do with the deer when they go out? <laughs> Did they go to the taxidermist? My lord, they've had so many. Bruder just acquired. He will not be eligible for the playoffs if the Angels make the playoffs because he was not on the club's roster after August 31st. And Stoudemire brings that fastball high. One ball, one strike. Todd is a gamer. He has been to the league championship series five times in his career, four with the Toronto Blue Jays, and the other last year with the St. Louis Cardinals. Breaking ball, hit foul, one and two. Stottle Myers pitched in two World Series, both with the Blue Jays. Four games in 1992. Did not give up a run in four games. And he pitched one more game in 1993. He has a chance to face his father in the playoffs if the Rangers win the division. They likely will play the New York Yankees. Little tapper toward short. Clayton goes second one. First base. Safe. He don't hit this ball hard enough for him to make a double play. Gives him a good speed, though. He really gave him a good speed. Garrett Anderson did a nice job breaking up that double play, going in hard to Mark McLemore. Fooder beat it by just a step. Now it's Paco Martin. And Stottlemyre may not have to throw a strike to Paco. He has gone out of the strike zone for his swing. First time and now second time. Well, when you haven't been playing much, I tell you what, it's pretty hard to have a good zone on that strike zone. Salmon third, Fruiter first, two outs now. May have left one over the plate that time. Yeah, he made a mistake there. Paco had a chance there. I don't think he's going to see a strike on this pitch. him away that is what he has done against Martin in their past Let's see how Rodriguez reads it after getting the sign from his skipper Johnny Oates 
They will go away. They're going to give him a breaking ball away. And Martin reaches for it. He's going to give him a fastball away. He's using first side. He wants a slider this time. There it is. Did Martin go? They appeal, and yes, Martin is out. Cochran never left home plate and should have been running after checking his swing, but he was waiting at home just in case he did not go around. But you see the swing. He did. There she is, a candidate for our new game show, The Ultimate Fan League. If you've got that excess knowledge of sports facts and statistics and players to test on, The Ultimate Fan League, Fox Sports Net's brand new game show. Call 1-888-448-4UFL to be a contestant. Great crowd on hand at Edison International Field for game one of this three-game series, and it's been all Texas. Both pitcher Todd Stottlemyre and the offense that has now knocked Steve Sparks out of the game. And Jeff Jude will now pitch to Will Clark, Yvonne Rodriguez, and Lee Stevens. Clark, the kid from Mississippi State, takes that fastball away. And just does catch it in the outside corner. Clark, very good fastball hitter. Very good hitter. Juden comes inside. One ball, one strike. Yesterday, Sparky, we saw Mark McGuire hit his 65th home run this year, and it looked like he got number 66 before umpire Bob Davidson said no, ground rule double. Fan reached over. Well, the thing that confused me was this. When St. Louis lodged a protest, can't lodge a protest. The rule book states no protests can be made on a judgment call. Now, they know that. They've all been in baseball long enough to understand the rules. Now, how, what, what do they want baseball to do? Change the rules for McGuire? No, you can't. That, I don't know if it was a home run or not, and who cares, but you can't protest it. Mm -hmm. The man just made a bad judgment call if he was wrong. That's not at all like the uh, George Brett situation with the pine tar and the bat where you could physically oh, see in, the evidence. That's in the rule yes. book. That's yes. in the rule book. Anything in the rule book can be pro uh, protested. Yes. Anything out of the rule book, it's just tough luck on you. <laughs> it's almost like a, uh, there's the home run race updated. Both players, McGuire and Sosa, are off tonight. McGuire with six games left and leads Sammy by two. Sosa 0 for 4 yesterday. The Cubs lost. That was a tough thing on Sammy Sosa Day. So they're one game behind the New York Mets, who are also off this evening. Clark waves at that good off speed thrown by Jeff Juden. Strike three. Well, here is Ivan Rodriguez, who has had a complete season, one of the candidates for MVP this year. He has a 296 career average tied to the highest by a catch in the last 50 years. Manny Sanguin did that. And he has hit 325 this year. You talk about the heat in Texas. That's impressive. Don takes strike one. Rodriguez, look at this. 313 last year, 325 this year, and he is doing it with a thumb that has been bothering him along the lower thumb near the wrist area. There are times where he'll have to turn his glove just to take some of that pressure off of his thumb when he's receiving because it seems like any time there's a pitcher in the game with a heavy sinker, he says it just pounds him on the heel of his hand. The thing I like about him, he plays. Johnny says he gets into arguments with him all the time about trying to take him out and give him a, a day off and rest. Yvonne argues to get back in. Johnny's a former catcher. He knows the wear and tear of that position.
Good fastball thrown by Juden. Look, you know, Juden does have good stuff. He, to me, he just has a problem of being consistent with it. Pitched brilliantly his first game with the Angels against the Detroit Tigers. Came after Rodriguez again. Yvonne fouls it off. Count stays at two and two. But he's bounced around through so many different teams. With Cleveland, with Milwaukee, with Houston, with Philadelphia. Montreal. Montreal. Yeah, that's where he had most of his success with the Montreal Expos. With six teams in six years, you start asking the question, why is he being passed around with such good stuff as he strikes out his second straight Ranger? It's the consistency or inconsistency you talk about. We always called those guys, my years when I was managing, they call them basketballs. They like to bounce from team to team. Now Lee Stevens taking it low and outside, ball one. Stevens has singled, scored a run, and popped to right field. Two and oh. Juden, big guy, six feet eight inches tall, 239 pounds. Good slider. The tallest player in Angels history at six feet eight. Chuck Finley's right there with him at six six. Look at that pitch. Two and two. And that's a slider. It almost looked like a fork ball. A good slider, too. He may throw it again. Nope, came fastball, popped him up. De Sarcina drifts out towards center field to make the catch, and Jeff Juden gets the Rangers. One, two, three in the fifth inning. We head to the bottom of number five. It is Texas five, the Angels nothing. Todd Stottlemyre is throwing a three-hit shutout against the Anaheim Angels. Texas has given him five runs, and he faces Gary DeSarcina and throws a first pitch strike. It is under the glove of Todd Zeal. The throw is right there to get Gary. You talk to a starting pitcher about what he wants to do to start a ball game, and usually the first thing you'll hear from him, I want to get my first pitch over. Stottlemyre now, Sparky, has thrown first pitch strikes to 16 of the 18 angels he has faced in this game and that's why it's so far been an easy game for him he's been incredible now greg jeffries who's grounded out twice once to short once to second now how about that ball one we got ourselves a rally yeah, we got a big thing going here That's low, two balls and no strikes. Well, it's like you always said. If you've got a hill to climb, wait and won't make it small. So the Angels have to start their rally right now. And Jeffrey sends one back up the middle for a base hit. A one-out single by Greg Jeffries. He's going for second and is there safely as Goodwin bobbled the baseball in center field. I guess Tom just assumed that Jeffries wouldn't be running hard all the way. That's what I told you. That he's like uh, Rose. You know, he plays the game one way. They play it all out. And then we'll wait the end of nine and see who won. Now Randy Bellardi, who has doubled in the game and grounded out to second base. It goes as a single and an error on the center fielder, Tom Goodwin. Texas made four errors yesterday in losing their game to the Oakland Athletics 6-3. to three. That pitch misses away. Two balls and no strikes. 
Johnny Oates called it one of the most disappointing losses of the year. It was not one of their more cerebral games, he said. Pass throw right there, two balls and one strike. Both teams came in tied at 83 and 72. Seven games remaining. The Angels have these three with Texas. And then four with Oakland. Tomorrow it's Finley against Helen. Hill and Burkett go on Wednesday. Good curveball. Check his swing and does not in time. Goes around and that is strikeout number five for Todd Stottlemyer. Boy, this one here, I I don't know about this. I got to see this. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. He did. That's the difference with the first base umpire. He's looking right down the shoot at you. So two outs, and Stottlemyre, ha Stottlemyre has been able to reach back for a little extra time with the fastball, with the breaking ball, and get that good snap. Now it's Edmonds, and Edmonds takes strike one. Jim has walked and popped to center field. Jeffries led off. Or actually, with a one-out single, went to second base on the air by Tom Goodwin. Fastball misses away, two and one. Showed you how strong Jim has been against these Texas Rangers this year. Came in with three home runs against Texas and a batting average of 436. The Angels need that kind of firefire right now, down by five runs. Oh man, he's been able to throw that breaking ball any time he has wanted to. And down. Look at this. He throws right down. See if he comes back with another. Stottlemyre stepped off as Pilardi's lead, or re rather Jeffrey's lead, was getting too aggressive for him at second base. Tried to throw that same breaking ball, but misses too far inside three and two. Jeffrey second base, two outs. The count three and two. The pitch to Edmonds. He swings and drives it deep to center field. Goodwin off on his horse and will run it down. Just in front of the warning track. The Angels threaten but are turned back in the fifth. It's 5 nothing. Texas going to number six. Rangers Angels tomorrow at 6.30 on Fox Sports West. Welcome back to Fox Sports West, your region of Fox Sports Net and our coverage of Anaheim Angels baseball. Texas with a 5-0 lead. And they have done it with a big night for the Rangers trade deadline pickups. Todd Stottlemyre, who came from the St. Louis Cardinals, five shutout innings tonight. Todd Geal, two for two, two runs in an RBI, picked up from the Florida Marlins. Royce Clayton also came with Stottlemyre from the Cardinals. He's one for two with a double and a run scored. So the late season ads have done well, and here's Zeal. 
He's the guy who started out with Los Angeles, then traded to Florida, then to Texas. And Juden starts him out with a high fastball. Two balls and no strikes. Ball popped up right side. Velarde is out. Anderson is in, and it is Randy calling off Garrett for the catch. And there's one out. Well, these two teams continue the battle for the American League West tomorrow night. Live coverage of the Angels Rangers begins at 6:30 with Angels in the infield right here on Fox Sports West. It'll be Chuck Finley on the mound for Anaheim, and Rick Helling going for his 20th win of the year, going for the Texas Rangers. Here is Jude. Against Royce Clayton, and he throws a fastball that misses away. Well, Sparky, I see where Toronto won tonight, 3-1. You say, why is that significant? Because Roger Clemens won his 20th game this evening. He's got a chance to win another Cy Young. Uh, I'll put it to you this way. It's locked already. In Clemens, a great win. Hey, he got a chance to win the Triple Crown again. And strikeouts and you match this stuff up with everybody else, including Martinez. And I'm going to tell you something. It'll shock you. He's got them in every category. And that's why Toronto is still in the wild card race against the Boston Red Sox. Boston lost tonight to Tampa Bay 8-4, to four, so Toronto moves up. Texas and Anaheim three games back as well. Clemens had 15 strikeouts tonight. 15. Well, he's marvelous. I'll tell you what now. You look at the Cy Young last year for the fourth time. This year will be the fifth time. He can just pitch. He has 260 strikeouts. That's 15 more than Martinez. He leads the league and earned run average at about 2.59 now. And he has the most wins, so he's leading the Triple Crown <laughs> once again. And, and last year, he was the first American leaguer to do it since Hal Newhauser back in 1945. He don't even have to pitch another game, <laughs> and he wins it. There's a strike, three balls and one strike. And he has one more year left on his contract with Toronto. But there was some talk before the trade deadline that Clemens might be going elsewhere. And there's a walk by Jeff Juden to Tom Goodwin. And Clayton, after Clayton made out for the second out, allowing Tom Goodwin to walk, Juden does not have a very good pickoff move. I think if I'm Jeff Juden, I'm only concentrating on McLemore, even if Goodwin steals second and third. I think you got it just about the way it should be. Goodwin goes, the pitch is thrown. Kruder's throw to second base is not in time. He, he was gone immediately. His 35th steal this year. Juden has such about six feet eight. He's got a lot of mechanics to go through and it, it's about two seconds to home play. That pitch comes inside two and all. So Jeff has to concentrate on getting Mark McLemore out. McLemore has been on twice reached on the air by Velarde in the first inning and scored walked in the fourth inning. In there, two and one. Texas scoring a run in the first, two in the second, and two in the fourth inning. Juden shut him out in the fifth. Goodwin leads from second base. Ground ball up the middle. Velarde has it. His throw is in time. And Juden shuts him out in the sixth. When we come back, 
Tim Salmon, Darren Erstad, and Garrett Anderson will be coming to the plate. Texas with a 5-0 lead on the Anaheim Angels. And now stepping to the plate, Tim Salmon to lead off the sixth inning for Anaheim. Well, the Angels down 5-0. And they are right now even with the Texas Rangers at 83 and 72 after tonight. There will be six games left. Terry Collins knows all about that. And then he says, hey, we're right where we wanted to be. And Tim Salmon was talking about it as well, and he said, it sounds like a broken record, but how many times have people written this team off, and how many times have we suffered a devastating injury only to reel off a couple of wins and get back in the race? Here they are again. I told you, they got a mound on Because every time you think the Angels are out of it, they come back and they do like what they did over the weekend to the Seattle Mariners. Texas loses two, the Angels win two. Salmon now fouls it off. Now they're being collared by a great pitcher, Todd Stottlemyre. You've got to tip your cap to what Stottlemyre has done so far. So far. The Angels send Finley tomorrow, Ken Hill on Wednesday. Certainly Texas going with a good one, and Rick Helling going with 19 wins tomorrow, and John Burkett roughed up this year but pitched very well on Friday. It was the only game they won against the Oakland Athletics this weekend. A tap of foul. Three balls, two strikes. Tim Salmon has always had strong September. Once again, having a good September. 304 career average, 26 home runs this year. And he's playing with a 75% tear and the arch underneath his left foot. Looks like Stoudemire may have taken something off that pitch. Tim just does foul it off. Be a good time for the Angels to come back with one or two runs. Get a rally started against Stottlemyre to make a dent in his 5 0 lead. And he misses inside. That's a good start for the Angels as they have their third walk off Stottlemyre in this game, his first since the first inning and the 89th walk for Salmon this year. Sparky, you were talking before the game with me about who the Angels have next. They go to Oakland. And the Texas Rangers go to Seattle. And you said you never really liked this situation going against teams whose seasons were already over. I don't like it because they get all thrilled if they knock you off. It doesn't make their season look so bad. Plus the fact that you do anything you want. And you steal, hit and run. And if they're out or they're, it's a bad play, who cares? You can't do that. I, I would rather play clubs that were in contention. That ball comes inside on Erstad, and it's one and one. Just got him on the inside corner. Stottlemyre has broken. Erstad curved balls with sliders. Struck him out with the bases loaded his first time up. Got him to a half or to third, his last. And that ball is whistled to Todd Zeal at third. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, that ball was a bullet. He reacted immediately. The Rangers, meantime, are 6 and 25 at Seattle since 1992. Here's a look at that smash again. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how he reacted that quick. He has not played a solid third base for the Texas Rangers since coming over with 12 errors, but he certainly has against these Angels. And a good curveball in there for a strike to Garrett Anderson. I don't believe I ever remember Todd throwing this many breaking balls. You know, when he started the game, he was throwing that fastball. And he wasn't locating it as well, walking uh, Edmonds, walking Salmon. 
and then he's getting the breaker. Maybe he's just said, you know what, this is the pitch that's working tonight. I guess so. Now he just threw a good fastball right on the outside part of the plate to Anderson. And then Garrett goes to Clayton. They've got one. The throw to first is not in time. Anderson beats it out. Garrett, Garrett really hustles on this play. I'm going to tell you something, because this is a double play. The ball was hit plenty good enough. And he was safe. Just, uh, it's very close, but he just hits the front of the bag. So now Chad Kruder comes up with two outs and still one man on. That's Garrett Anderson at first base. Kruder has struck out swinging and reached on a force out. Angels had a threat in the first inning with the bases loaded just one out, but did not score when Erst had struck out. Anderson grounded out and had a threat again in the fourth inning with two on, but Cooter grounded out, reached on the force actually, and then Paco Martin popped up. Strike. Well, he has been in front of everybody. It seems like the Angels, every time they walk the home plate, they're walking up there with the count nothing in two. Misses away. Another thing, Steve, he's throwing harder than normal. Tonight he's throwing very hard. The Angels have Mark Johnson in a pinch hitting situation. If he comes to play, he will be pinch hitting for Paco Martin. Who curveball. Fruiter with good discipline not to swing at it because he was a fighter just below that strike zone. You know why he didn't swing at it? He had no chance if he did. Could they hit it anyway? There's no way he's going to hit that pitch. That, that pitch there is such a tough pitch, you can't hit it. Inside. Now it's full three and two. Angels would love to get a walk here. Big, big Johnson up to the plate, who has uh, tremendous power at 22 home runs in the minor leagues this year. Right now, Chad's got to fight it off. Stoudemire running the count full. He's thrown 96 pitches in the night. He's just in the sixth inning. Anderson goes the pitch, swung on and missed, but Pruder tapped it into the glove and then out of the glove of Rodriguez. So Anderson will try it again at first base, running on the 3-2 count. Garrett goes. The pitch is high. Ball four. So the Angels have a threat here in the sixth inning. As Donaldmeyer reaching near the 100 pitch mark. And Mark Johnson will come to the plate who has tremendous power. Hardy picks up the phone and says, who do you want to warm up? The Texas middle relief has not been outstanding this year. But they do have a closer named John Wetland, who can be fantastic. Well, Tim Crabtree got a hold of the Angels last week and for three innings. He was brilliant. And their 7 6 victory. Last week, Texas beat the Angels twice once 5 3, and the other time 7 6, as the Angels led twice in the game 4 0 and 6 4. But Texas didn't quit. Rodriguez hit a late home run to tie. Tom Goodwin won of the eighth inning. And it is Crabtree. The right-hander is up. Tony Foss is the left-hander. So Stottlemyre must face Mark Johnson. Do you know how to pitch Johnson? Well, if I'm Stottlemyre, I throw him a fastball right down the middle. No, you're pitching in up yes and break him to I, death. I, I was talking about as if you're an Angels fan this is the way you uh, want him oh, pitch, yeah, right want, down the middle I tell belt you, high. He, he likes the ball from the belt down middle end from the middle of that plate inside 
breaking ball ball one and Johnson at 6'4 235 pounds will go out of the zone we've seen him hit home runs but look what he's done against Todd in his past five for nine with a home run in there one and one that has been his outfit when he needed a strike he's gone with that curveball he's thrown 100 pitches now in the game through 120 in the last game against the Angels in eight innings and that smoke toward center field the good one has it red and makes the catch ending the inning so the Angels lead two more and we headed to seven with Texas still leading five nothing Baseball on Fox Sports West. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by authority of the Anaheim Angels and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Anaheim Angels is prohibited. Troy Gloss stays in the game or comes in the game after Mark Johnson pinch hit for Paco Martin and Gloss will take over at third base. So we head to the seventh inning with Texas leading five nothing as the Rangers trying for the one game lead in the American League West. And Rusty Greer takes the first pitch from Jeff Juden for a strike. Greer is two for three in the game, singling in the first and singling in the fourth, both times off Steve Sparks. He drove in a run in his last at bat, now has 101 on the year. And Juden picks it up. His throw is off the bag, and Mostad saves it from going into the seats. He sets up good. I, I don't know what made him throw the ball the way he did. He set up real good. So they've given Greer a base hit. Two areas of his game he must improve on. Holding base runners and fielding. Too late. He's been around for too long, I told you. But that's a basketball. Jeff Juden has allowed 47 steals this year. Let's see if Greer goes. He may not with Gonzalez at the plate. And Juan with a home run swing fouls it straight back. Juden has allowed more stolen bases than any other pitcher in baseball this year with 47 steals. Here's Gonzalez. Single to drive in his 155th run of the year in the first inning. Fly to center, almost hit it out in the third and popped to short against Juden. In there. Nothing in two. Since 1950, which 1949 season it was Fern Stevens and Ted Williams who had 159 Tommy Davis in the 60s with the Dodgers and Galarraga did it in the 90s the pitch misses away one ball and two strikes but he is four away from having the most RBIs of any American leaguer since Fern Stevens and Ted Williams both did it in 1949 with 159 RBIs and he might be the leading candidate for most valuable player in the American League. Griffey's had a great year, but Seattle's well out of it. And that team has underachieved this year. And every time the Rangers have needed a big hit this season, Gonzalez has given them that lift. Mo Vaughn is a leading candidate. I'll tell you, Manny Ramirez is having a great year with Cleveland. Ooh, high fastball, and Gonzalez swings and misses. Striking out. That's three strikeouts for Jeff Juden. I told you, look at this picture. That ball run up. He has good stuff. The stuff is, is really good.
Jeff June's a little like that Forrest Gump line. Jeff June's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> like tonight, he has got exceptional yes. stuff. He's thrown shutout baseball since coming on in the fourth inning. Now Will Clark takes a nasty pitch that runs away from him for strike one. Clark now batting 307 after going 0 for 2 in the game, lining sharply with two on the bases in the first inning for the second out, walking a second time up and striking out his last. Ooh, Jeff Juden went way upstairs. Ball to strike. Will Clark from New Orleans, Louisiana. Grew up very close, you know, about 60 miles away from LSU, but he said did not have a good visit there, and that's one of the reasons he went to Mississippi State. Here it goes, and the pitch swung on and sent to left field, and it twists and goes foul. So Greer must go back to first base, and the count will be one and two. Jeffrey's limping a bit. He's got the right hamstring problem. Darren Erstad has the left hamstring problem. Why do you worry about little things like that? That's true. Because it's information the fans the need. Thing you have, Terry has to ask them when they come in the clubhouse. Let me see, are you breathing? If you're breathing, <laughs> okay. Pencil him in the lineup. That's not a fun feeling. I, I'm just uh, joshing because when you are in these type of games and you got people that are playing that are hurt, and then you got some that aren't even around because you got problems. Tim Salmon is suffering the same injury that Will Clark suffered last year. Clark is at the plate, and Will had to shut it down in late August last season. He said the pain was too severe. But Will was playing first base and had to because of the designated hitting situation they had with Stevens and Mike Sims. And he said he had a 40% tear, and it was hurting him so badly in the field that they said, Will, you know what, just shut it down. And he did, and he said, by December, Without any surgery, he was fine. And he's played just about every single game this year. Line drive past Erstad into right field. Greer will make it to third. And Texas's Jerry Naren will hold him there. The Rangers threatening for more in the seventh inning, already leading 5 nothing. Well, he got on that fastball low and in well. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> this guy's a good hitter. He doesn't have quite the power that he used to have. But he's a good hitter and knows how to hit. He understands what's going on in the ball game as well as any player I've played against. And a good situational hitter. He's one of those guys... Runner at second base, nobody out. He gets him to third. Well, he understands baseball. Now, that coach at Mississippi State has to be an outstanding coach because if you look at the players he's had. How about the team that Clark played on? Palmero was on the team. Raphael Palmero. Couple pitchers. Bobby Thigpen was on the team. Jeff Montgomery was on that team. Oh, not Jeff Montgomery. I'm sorry. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Brantley. Brantley. Will Clark was the Golden Spikes winner. College Baseball Player of the Year. There's a base hit left field by Rodriguez. In comes Greer to make it 6-0. And with the left-hander coming up, out comes Marcel Lashman to visit with Jeff Judy. Just got a pitch. A little bit up. Who's trying for that outside corner but trying to keep it down. Rangers tonight, Sparky, have been excellent with runners in scoring position. With men on base, they are 7 for 16 in the game, while the Angels are 1 for 11. You can pat Todd Stottlemyre in the back because he has just made some marvelous pitches at key times tonight. But that don't match up good, though, when you're 1 for 11 and they're 7 for 16. That's bad nope. odds. I don't see too many teams winning with those no. odds. Those are bad odds. Watson's the left-hander, Fetter's the right-hander, and Stoudemire, who's over the 100 pitch mark, now has a six-run lead to work with. 
and the Rangers threatening for more. Juden will face Stevens and Zeal. He's got a lefty, then a pair of righties. Good pitch. Fastball wanders away. Well, Boston came back and won the second game of the doubleheader with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. They lost the first 8-4. They won the nightcap 4-3. That will help the Red Sox in their pursuit of the American League Wild Card Championship. Ball's popped up. Shortstop Gary DeSarcina for the second out. So two outs in the seventh inning with Texas leading by six. Here is Todd Zeal. He is two for three in the game, doubling, reaching on an infield hit. He has driven in a run and scored two. The Todd was thinking about doing a little catching, trying to make himself more valuable in the future. Playing third base now, he can play third, first, and if he can catch. He can play in this game a few more years. Well, he started with yep. Jack. With St. Louis. Fine catcher at UCLA. All-American there. But he grew up a Dodgers fan and then had an opportunity to play there and said, it was a dream come true. Then the Dodgers traded into Florida. Wild deal with Mike Piazza going to the Marlins for Gary Sheffield and Bobby Bonilla, Charles Johnson. Two and two. Todd just thinking that Jeff Juden was taking too much time, so he calls time with runners in first and second, two outs, a run already home in the seventh inning with Texas leading 6 nothing. Zeal does not pull the trigger, counts full three and two. Now the runners will be moving with two outs in the seventh inning. Runners go. The pitch is taken. Ball four. So Zeal is on. Here comes Royce Clayton. And Terry Collins at the top step of the dugout has not emerged yet. He'd like this right-hander to face Clayton. And hope that he can get one more man out. And he's got a, a lefty and good one. A switch hitter McLemore. And he may go to Alan Watson or Mike Fetters. Larry Bowen now talking with the bullpen. Who's ready? Clayton, one of the reasons that Terry Collins might be saying we're going to leave Jeff in to face Royce Clayton is that Clayton has never gotten a base hit against Juden in his career. He is 0 for 12. Right now, Jeff has to locate that strike zone. I don't like that, that number 13 staring you in the face. Two balls, no strikes. What's that 13 you're talking about? The go for 12. Oh. The 13 is the lucky yeah, number. Okay. Forgot about that. There's a strike. Two balls, one strike. Juden's next pitch will be his 60th of the ball game. Came on to replace Steve Sparks in the bottom of the fourth inning with two outs. 
Now gone three full innings. Just off the corner. Three and one. I'll bet you Chad Kruder, the way Juden's ball moves, will be setting up right down the middle of the plate. <laughs> Jeff has good stuff. His ball moves well. There's Chad setting up right down the heart of the plate. And his pitch is low. Ball four. L1 will score. Out comes Terry Collins. It is 7-0 Texas. And Collins will make the pitching change as Juden has lost it here in the seventh inning. An RBI for Clayton, his first of the game. And Will Clark comes home from third base. We'll be right back. Seven nothing. The Texas Rangers have the lead on the Anaheim Angels in the seventh inning. It's hardcore football on Fox Sports West. Ronnie Lott, Bill Moss, and Ron Fitz show you the real NFL. Hardcore blood, sweat, and tears. Hardcore football for the hardcore fans. Thursday at 9 o'clock on Fox Sports West. Alan Watson will make his first appearance in this Texas Rangers series. It is the first of a three-game series as... Watson looking for his seventh win. The Angels need to come back from a mighty deficit here in the seventh inning, down 7 0. 33 walks, 58 strikeouts for Allen. He's given up a lot of hits in 87 in the third innings this year. He will face Tom Goodwin. Base is still loaded for Texas. And Allen wants to talk to Chad Gruder. Clark, you sometimes you have to remind your club that this is just the first of three. What conversation might you have with your ball club after a game like this? I, I really believe in these situations. Just go on, let everybody go on, natural, just like it was another game. Don't keep referring to this. They know. You don't have to tell them. Base is loaded for Texas. Fastball misses low from Allen Watson. I found out in, in watching guys, the more you refer to it, the more they think you're scared. <laughs> Goodwin fouls it off. The ball to strike. Casey Stingle had the greatest theory, and I, I marvel at what he told me. When his club was playing good, he would eat them out all the time. For every mistake. When they were playing bad, he was very gentle to them. Never blamed for mistakes, never. Because he said, they know. When they're playing good, jump all over them because they're feeling real good. They're not going to get down on them. Watson gets the inside corner, two balls and two strikes. To pat him on the back when things are rough. Kick him when it's going good. Goodwin chops it to uh, second base. Bellardi, Erskett is there, and Goodwin is to save, safe. And a run will score. It is 8 nothing. Terry Collins will come out to argue with Derwood Merrill. Collins had a pretty good argument. Oh. oh. 
Erstead was getting his back, his foot back in time, and Texas was saying, yeah, he's safe. A run will score. It's 8 nothing, Texas. The shot will fire on the mound. It could be enough, but still the Angels have nine outs to go. So Goodwin reaches on the infield hit. Rodriguez scores in the play. Now McLemore, and there is a strike. The ninth Ranger to bat in this inning is at the play. Texas has scored three runs in this seventh to push the lead to eight nothing. But like you said, it doesn't matter if it's twenty to nothing or two to one. It's one game. That's all it is. But you know, there's a case where uh, Terry was out there arguing. He can't really, really argue like he wants for this reason. His club has already put him seven down. He's losing seven to nothing. It makes it look like he's just complaining. But he was right. Ground ball foul. Have you ever had an umpire come up to you maybe the next day and say, you know, Sparky, I was wrong about that play. I oh, saw yeah. the replay. Yeah, yeah. I have. I tell you what, most of them, and, and there's occasion, but most of them are totally fair, and they want to do things right. Bob Davidson did, uh, yesterday said, I don't care if it was Mark McGuire's 150th home run, I still have to call the game the way I see it. And he thought the uh, fan reached over the uh, line. And I hope that never changes. I hope we never go with the replay. No, absolutely because, not. Because uh, just like that play, if you got the replay to look at, well, you, you see it. But that's what makes this a great game. But had that play occurred on home run number 62 in St. Louis, I don't know if Mr. Davidson would have made it out of Bush Stadium. No, I don't know if he could have made it out of America. <laughs> I would have been right there to say, touch them all. Go, Mark. Oh, go. Congratulations. They'll be the first friend the Greek at second base. That guy could have reached over and hit him. I said, touch them all. It's good. And Watson strikes out McLemore. But Texas comes up with three runs in the seventh to take the commanding 8 nothing lead on the Anaheim Angels. Let's take a look at what's coming your way tonight on Fox Sports News following our game. For that, we take you to the Fox Network Center. The American League West showdown will continue tomorrow night on Fox Sports West. Rick Helling looks for his 20th win against Chuck Finley at 7.05. Wednesday, it is John Burkett going against Ken Hill. You see the number for tickets, and there are plenty left. 714-663-9000, but we expect a great one. And a crowd of near 40,000 on hand tonight. They're not enjoying this one as the home team Angels are down 8-0. Gary DeSarcino will lead off at the bottom of the seventh. Todd Stottlemyre, who's thrown over 100 pitches in this ball game, delivers to DeSar ball one. I have to question that pitch. That was a curveball on the first pitch. He's leading 8 to nothing. Just, just be aggressive? Well, I, I think you throw it right down Broadway and say, here, hit it if you can. I don't think you start pitching to anybody when you got an eight-run lead. Yeah, but you were a second baseman. You were a manager. You never got to pitch with numbers like that. He doesn't want to give up a run. He wants to pitch. Good, good. Oh. <laughs> I got you going. <laughs> I want nine outs. There you go. And he has fallen behind Gary DeSarcina, 3-0. and oh. He went curveball, then fastball low, misses inside with the fastball. And catches the inside corner. Now it is three and one. Desarcina 0 for two, grounded out to third and to short. And three for ten on this homestand. And knocks the ball into center field. A long run for Tom Goodwin, but he gets there. I'm going to tell you something. He's a good outfielder. When he was at Kansas City, I could not understand why they moved him to left and put De uh, uh, Damon in center. This kid can outrun a baseball. 
Well, they said it was Kansas City that really got him started. When he was with the Dodgers system, they said, with Los Angeles, you have to do it immediately. They're not going to be patient with you at all. So he said going to Kansas City allowed him to play, and Casey said, go out there and play. Let's see what you got. He never had a chance with the Dodgers. Had 97 total at-bats over three years before they waived him after the 1993 season. I'm going to tell you something. He's a, he's a good player, and he's an extremely good player, like Geronimo was in Cincinnati when I was there, when he's surrounded by good offense. But he doesn't have to be really any part of it. And he's a guy I know you would enjoy because he's always trying to improve his game, trying to learn how to bunt better. He has a lot more bunt hits this year and infield hits than he's ever had in his career. Well, they tell me that he's a fine person. Yeah. And you know, when he went to Fresno State. He's a bulldog. Absolutely. Fastball runs away. Led the nation in steals two straight years. Well, what about the Fresno State program? You know, that's a pretty good program. They got a heck of a coach up there. Bob Bennett, the coach. In fact, I think it's Mark Gardner who uh, was at Fresno State and said, Mark Bennett is a real good teacher of the curveball. He's very good with pitchers. Gardner's got a good curveball. Giants. Giants. Yeah, I've seen him pitch. He does have a good curveball. Here's Greg Jeffries with one out. Count is two and two. Jeffries may have gone after ball three, but listed out of play. You see him when he swung, his leg was bothering him. You see that? He's not going to tell anybody about it. Oh, no, I told you, this is a tough kid. And he's Look at to foul again. You see? Yep. Same ball. Watch, watch that leg now. Collapse well, the counts full three and two. You know, if Greg gets on, the Angels may just pinch run for him. Might get Orlando Palmero. Only Tony Gwynn is tougher to strike out than Jeffries among active players. This guy makes contact and hits the ball hard. Career numbers up over 295. And again, he flips it foul. See, if this was April, May, even June, July, you could go ahead and set him down. Uh, but you can't do it now. Look at him limp around first base. Now he'll make it to first base, and let's see if the Angels send out a pinch runner. Yes, they will. It will be Reggie Williams. So Williams comes on for Greg Jeffries. Watch him after he hits the ball, folks. Look at his face. He's crying. I tell you, look at that. This is this is just like the Angels this year. That image is just like the Angels. Well, you know what? I think that's what's made them fruitful. Be able to survive through all of this for the simple reason they've all had to do this. It's made them, it's made them better people, better players. Sparky, the sports world lost a great athlete today. Lawrence Griffith Joyner, the age of 38, died of heart failure. But I remember a comment she had when she had that unbelievable Olympics, and she said, you never fail until you stop trying. That's right. I was, I was telling my wife at breakfast, I said, this lady, even though she holds two now, the 100 and the, and the 220, the other ones have been broken. I told her, this is the greatest woman athlete of our time. She was unbelievable. Ran a 10-4-9 in the 100 meters. But that is so true. You don't fail until you stop trying. And, and the Angels have been given all kinds of reasons to quit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if they had a manager that was willing to complain and, and accept all that, they would have quit. Good pitch by Stottlemyre, and 
Velarde's behind the count, nothing in two. It was very interesting seeing Terry Collins after Friday's loss. On Saturday, I come into the dugout and sit down next to Terry. He's in great spirits. He's telling jokes. The team's lost three in a row. They're down two games to the Texas Rangers. He will not let his club read into maybe his personal emotions what's going on in his gut because he told me off to the side, he said, I'm not getting much sleep. Yeah. <laughs> well, but see, but that's why he's such a good manager. And it's easy if you got everything going perfect for you and all your horses are healthy and everything's going. That's wonderful. But his hasn't been that way, and this has been a trip for him. And I tell you what, last year I thought he was a good, I thought he was a good manager. I really did. This year he proved to me, and, and I don't care what happened, he must be voted manager of the year. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. I don't care whether they get to the playoffs or they don't. Remember June? That was a time when he lost three starting pitchers. They went 22 and six in the month of June to go from well in late May they were six games off the uh, Texas Rangers pace. They took a two and a half game lead late that month. And you go, how'd they do it without McDowell? How'd they do it without Hill? And I know I've used this quote so many times that Terry Collins said, middle of June, everybody's talking injuries, and he says, fellas, let's don't talk about what we don't have. Let's talk about what we do have and move on. Yeah. Well, the thing about him is he's so strong-willed, and his will has, has went to his players. That's what I like to watch. I, I love to watch a guy that can change his club into him. And I've always said this, your Dean Smith, your Johnny Wooden, you go on and on, Bear Bryant, there's so many that the list, Rod Gatos, you'll find out if you're gonna do a story on them. I wouldn't go talk to them. I wouldn't go talk to Mr. Wooden. I wouldn't go talk to Mr. Bryant. I wouldn't go talk to Mr. Gatos. I'd go talk to the players he had in the past and the players he has now. They will tell you what he is because they have changed those players into them. Edmonds rips one into the corner in right field. Racing around to third is Reggie Williams. Larry Bowe will hold him at third and Edmonds goes into second base with a double. Now the crowd is howling. They're saying, why didn't you send the runner from third base but Larry Boa knows how to play baseball and he was wise in holding the runner third. Well, Larry would better lose eight to nothing than gamble here on that one run. If he gambles here and that guy is thrown out, what do we do now? We still have something going. What do we do now? But for Jim Edmonds, that is his 41st double this year. The club record is 42. Edmonds is at second base and continues the rally. But like you say, if Williams is thrown out of home plate, then the Angels rally is over and they've got six outs to go. And Salmon shoots it foul. And they're down 8 0. If the score is 2 1, maybe he challenges. Oh, maybe it. with two out? Yeah, no he one. challenges the 2 1. I always say Larry didn't go to school to eat his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> he went to play baseball and also to study. That's right. Salmon, that may have been the pitch for him, and he misses it one and two as he fouls it straight back to the screen. I'd be very surprised if Dalemeyer gets finishes this inning that he comes out in the eighth. I'd be very surprised. His pitch count now is nearing 120. 126. He threw 120 in the Angels last win. Johnny Oates will need him again against the Seattle Mariners this weekend. But this is the fourth straight terrific game that Stottlemyre has thrown for Johnny and Dick Bosman on the left side, the pitching coach. Two and two. Williams third, Edmonds second. The Angels without a run, and 
Salmon, they'll, they will not appeal. He did not go around. The count's full three and two. The lefty is Tony Foster's. Tim Crabtree is the right-hander. He strikes him out, and Salmon is done. So are the Angels. We head to the eighth inning here in Anaheim. It is 8-0 Texas. Todd Stottlemyre's evening is over, but boy, was he brilliant tonight. A six-hit shutout. Gets the hug from Yvonne Rodriguez as he talks with pitching coach Dick Bosman. He allows the Angels six hits, but no runs, and Will Clark was part of this big lead. Gives him a handshake, and Reggie Williams for the Angels will take over in left field, and Chris Pritchett takes over for Darren Erstad at first base. One nice thing, Reggie's healthy. I just want to let you know. And, He's so, and so is Chris. <laughs> yeah, they're healthy. The Angels sending Alan Watson against Rusty Greer, Juan Gonzalez, and Will Clark here in the eighth inning. And that ball is ripped towards right field, a base hit. Anderson runs it down, but Greer has at least two, and he will stop there with a double. That pitch is too much of the plate. It's right down there where old Rusty likes it. So Greer with the leadoff double. That is his fourth hit of the night. He has singled three times. He has doubled now to start the eighth inning. And Juan Gonzalez will step up against Alan Watson. Gonzalez with 44 home runs this year. He has driven in 155 runs, has just one hit, and the RBI back in the first inning, and he takes high from Watson. Leads the majors just by one over Sammy Sosa, who has 154. Chicago and the Cardinals not playing tonight. Sosa has 63 home runs. Mark McGuire with 65. Mets lead by one over the Chicago Cubs in the wild card race. Mets also with this night off. That ball is shot to left field and it will go to the wall. Greer will come home. It is 9-0 Texas and Gonzalez has a double. Watson has been up in the strike zone since coming out. That ball, you get that ball belt high to him, he'll, he'll crush it. He crushed that ball. And he now has 156 RBIs. You always like to make the comment, he leaned on it. Yeah, he did. He, he did. He leaned on it. So back-to-back -back doubles have made it 9-0 Texas, and the fans beginning to fly out of here. But they'll be back tomorrow night as the Angels send Chuck Finley uh, against Rick Helling. And it was really interesting what Terry Collins did. Because Chuck Finley has thrown a lot of pitches lately. He gave him an extra day off. He moved Sparks up because Sparks was knocked out in the second inning, figuring he could go on Monday on three days rest, and then he'd have Finley after five days rest, give him that extra day to Get come back absolutely the right thing and like I say this is the first of three but that's only the first of seven there's six more after all yep. the results big curveball thrown by Alan Watson and he strikes out Will Clark Stottlemyer and Bosman still visiting as Todd going for win number five with the Texas Rangers. He's been so strong against the Angels the last two.
But his last four games now have just been quality start after quality start. He has 13 wins overall this season. Best year he's ever had in the major leagues was that 15 win season back in 1991 with Toronto. But he was always what you call a guy that would be there every start. He was a tough kid. Now Yvonne Rodriguez. Gonzalo second base with, no, with just one out now. Rodriguez is one for four, lining out his first time up, grounding out, striking out, and singling to drive in a run. His last at bat against Jeff Juden. And Yvonne now has 88 RBIs. They have three players with over 100. They have another with 88. Popped him up right side. Garrett Anderson. Two outs. Every night on Fox Sports Net, it's Fox Sports News Prime Time. All the scores, all the highlights, and all the breaking stories covering your hometown team seven nights a week. We are there. Fox Sports News Prime Time tonight after the game on Fox Sports West. This is Jerry Naren, third base coach, watching Lee Stevens at the plate. You think Jerry Naren's a good candidate to be a manager in his future? If, if he don't get one this year, something's wrong. Because I'm going to tell you something. Jerry Naren deserves to manage in the major leagues. Why? Well, first of all, he's very talented baseball-wise. And secondly, he has worked a long time with a very fine manager. Johnny Oak. Yeah, that's the guys I want. The guys that work just like uh, Larry Boa. Larry Boa has worked with a column. Those type of guys are the guys I'm looking for. I want the guy that's been an assistant to a guy that's good. Pass ball by Watson. I will send the count to two balls and one strike. And they always use the comment, he's a good communicator. You say you don't want a manager who's a good communicator. You want a manager who understands people. That's what I want. That, the communication, I don't know what all that means. I know this. I want a guy that understands his players. You've got 25 different players from 25 different places in life. They're totally different. I want the manager that can understand them. Understand what his problem. Understand why he does something that's maybe not right, and get that solved. That's why uh, David Wells with uh, the Yankees. I he's one of my all-time favorites because we were able, me and him together, to solve things. And now look at him. He's having a shy young kind of season for the New York Yankees, and Todd Stalemeyer trying to get his Rangers into the playoffs. Following the game on Fox Sports News, Cal Ripken returns. Steve Sachs has his Fox scope and uh, track and field tragedy. Terrible loss of a great star and Lawrence Griffith Joyner. We'll have that and all the scores and highlights from around the major leagues. Well, Cal Ripken did play tonight after ending his consecutive games played streak at 2,632 last night. He played in Toronto, went two for four against Roger Clemens, and looked very well rested. <laughs> 24 hours, all he needed. <laughs> but Toronto won three to one as Roger Clemens won his 20th and struck out 15. Is he a horse? He's a horse. That's what you call the horse. Him and that Johnson down in Houston, they're horses. Randy Johnson would have been nine and one. Nine and one. He was a little off that first game, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now Craig Chipley at the plate for the Angels. Chipley sends it to center field. Right at Tom Griffin, he makes the catch. 
for the first down. Tony Bosses, now the Texas Rangers pitcher, started the year with the Seattle Mariners, but really got mashed around as part of their bullpen problems that had blown so many saves this year. But Bosses recovered and found his sweeping slider in Texas. You know, that has to be hard. You always wonder, where did I lose my pitch? And then you get to Texas. And you probably go into your locker. Oh, I left my curveball here. Well, that's where it's been. That's where it's been. He's been around. I'm going to tell you, he's got Oakland, Boston. I can remember about Cardinals. Here's another one that had a ball that's been dribbled around a little bit. Yeah, he looks like a guy you'd find at the library in front of a computer. If you're left-handed, you can sweep it away from a lefty. You've got a long life in the major leagues. Well, they won't let you quit. You know, even if you want to quit, they don't allow you to. Ground ball up the middle. Clayton has it. His throw in time to get Garrett Anderson. And that's the second out of the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, this, if the Angels lose this game and they are down 9-0, it will even the series at five wins each. The Angels swept Terry Collins' team in Arlington, winning tonight 9-0. The Angels sending up another pinch hitter in Todd Green. I wonder if Ben Molina will make his first catching activity. Well, they swung and a miss on a Fossa sweeper that... Green was way out in front of. One ball, one strike. Boy, he's one young man that right now, the way he sets up, and watch his hands, how he sets up and then he drops that ball up on him. It's a tremendous problem. But he'll, he'll get over that. See that? That's a foul ball. It drops him in, and that ball back up on him. It's tough to get to. Yeah, Ty, or Rod Carew always preaches that down and through. Not drop your hand, just take him right from that shoulder and come down and through that baseball. You'll see it here very easily. Yeah. All right, see yep. that? Sends it to right field, and rather deep. Gonzalez is back at the wall there to make the catch. So the Angels go quietly in the eighth, and we head to the ninth. It's all Texas tonight. It is Texas all over the Angels in the ninth inning in the first of a three-game series. Let's check out our Hoover pick of the game. Came way back in the first inning. Will Clark with this smash that Darren Erstad at first base just makes a beautiful play to keep it at one nothing Texas. That time a close game. Not anymore. The Rangers have jumped all over the Angels with one in the first, two in the second, two in the fourth, three in the seventh, and one in the eighth inning. Here in the ninth, they will send Todd Seal, Royce Clayton, and Tom Goodwin. Ben Molina makes his major league debut as the Angels catcher. Mike Fetters will be pitching to him. Craig Shipley will be at first base. And the new shortstop is Justin Bachman. There's strike one. Fetters looked very good on Saturday night, shutting out the Seattle Mariners in one, two, three fashion in the eighth inning. The one thing I've noticed, uh, and maybe he was doing it before, but it seems like Mike Fetters is turning his body more. He's closing off that front shoulder. Yeah, but also watch him throw. And when he throws, just watch his shoulder. Just watch his shoulder. Nothing else. That's all you want to watch. Not his front shoulder, but his it's throwing shoulder. Throw, throwing shoulder. See him cut it off? Well, the reason you cut that off, he's had shoulder problems. And any time you see a guy cut it off, you know right away that guy had shoulder problems. He could have had it five years ago or one year ago. What? See him? Didn't cut it off? 
Zeal fouls it back. It's two and two. You just watch that front shoulder. Don't even watch the arm throwing it or anything. Just the shoulder. See? See him cut it? Mm -hmm. And he strikes out Todd Zeal on that good split finger pick. And I'll tell you another trick. If you want to ever see a guy that has elbow problem bothering him, all you want to do is watch watch him release. In other words, when he releases the ball, he will grab his fist like that. And the reason he grabs his fist is to cut the pain off. Yeah, because the decelerator muscle and needs when to he, be... Uh, Bob Gibson at the end there, he was throwing, he had a bad elbow. And when Bob would throw, boom, he grabbed that fist. Oh. And back then, it was just a bad arm. He didn't know it was wrong. <laughs> it was just it. But it's, uh, it's really amazing how you can watch a guy. Base hit up the middle by Royce Clayton, his second hit of the night. Well, Texas, the guys that they acquired on the July 31st trade deadline have really come through tonight. Clayton with a pair of hits, a single and a double. Todd Zia with a pair of hits, single and a double, an RBI, two runs scored. And Todd Stottlemyer with seven shutout innings. Now, Tom Goodwin. I'm going to tell you one other thing after he pitches. Man told me George Kitzel, who's the greatest baseball mind I ever seen, told me he said if a guy comes to you and he wants to work out with you, he's been released with somebody, he wants to work out, and he throws for you that day in the bullpen. And boy, you say, boy, he threw good. Oh yeah, I want to sign him. He said no, no. Tell him to come back tomorrow <laughs> and throw tomorrow, because he said they can do that come in and throw good on one day but that's all they got the next day they're in pain they're down 15 miles an hour there ain't nothing there good one did he go around oh. just shook his head said nope it's two and two well real close at nine nothing they ring I was up. gonna say if I'm on uh, nine nothing you, you done got a place over <laughs> on the bench Dave Phillips uh, poor Dave's hurting so bad though he's bruised all over I ain't lying who, uh, who ran over him I don't know which player it was but it was that first base <laughs> he, he said up word to me that he says Barson, a 54 year old man does not want to have a collision with a 24-year-old man. <laughs> Dave's with it. Oh, he's a good guy. You can always talk to Dave. Good one to center field, right at Jim Edmonds for the second out. Clayton back at first base. Again, Fox Sports News will be coming your way after the ball game. All the scores and highlights from around the major leagues will also be taking a look at tonight's Monday Night Football action and what's gone on in the NFL as we are almost through September. Here is Mark McLemore. And he takes strike one. The Angels will have up in the bottom of the ninth inning hitters eight, nine, and one. Troy Gloss. Gary D. Sarcina, and then Reggie Williams. Or rather, Justin Bachman, I should say, should say for Gary. Fastball runs away. We don't know if there were any double switches where those guys might be hitting. It's not going to matter. You're right. Where the double switch I'm just wondering if Mr. Molina is going to get his first major league. He, he's a good catcher. Was he, uh, was he at uh, Edmonton? Yes, Triple A Vancouver. I'm sorry. Vancouver. We like his catching ability. Plays in the Winter League every single year. Played it for the championship team last year. There's a ground ball. Second base. Pilari throws out McLemore. We are through eight and a half innings. 
here in Anaheim. Ben Molina in his major league debut, but it's the Texas Rangers all over the Angels. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Texas Rangers with a 9-0 lead over the Anaheim Angels. 14 hits to the Angels. Six and the Angels have erred two times in this game. The new Texas pitcher is Xavier Hernandez. The only man with the first name that starts with X in the big leagues this year. This year, six and six is record of three and a half earned run average. Okay, so this is an outstanding person. He is really a good guy. Yeah, how did you know him? Well, it's a funny thing. He, I didn't really know him until one day he came up to me and he said, I just like to say hello to you. Not many people want to come up and say hello to me. I can understand <laughs> why. You, you know why. <laughs> and he did. And then we just became good friends. Isn't she a sweetheart? She came with her pom poms. She's got her halo on her hat. And look at this. She's going to put it under the hat and she's going to have ears. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Perfect. She ain't going to quit. She'll be back tomorrow. You bet. Crowd of near 40,000 expected for tomorrow night. And it should be a great one because Chuck Finley will be pitching on five days rest against Rick Heller. This is way up. The uh, average this year has been almost 31,000 fans per game. It'll be near two and a half million when it's all said and done after Wednesday. Over two million this year for the first time since 1993. Look at that average. 9,000 from a year ago. Brand new stadium and a fighting ball club. Here is Troy Gloss to lead things off in the bottom of the ninth inning. Gloss, Bachman, and Reggie Williams. Three rookies in a row. Gloss with a swing and a miss. Pulls off that Xavier Hernandez fastball, one and one. Rod was working with him today when I came in, and I just sat up here and watched him. And what Rod was trying to do to do is what you said. Down and good. He has a long swing, which we knew by watching him before. See, when you see the back shoulder dip, right? yeah. okay, when the back shoulder dips, the bat has to come up and around. That's why you want to keep these both. They stay there, your swing is down through, and your back shoulder is coming through the ball above your left shoulder. See that? Well, our Gatorade player of the game has to be Todd Stottlemyre. Seven shutout innings, a critical strikeout of Darren Erstad earlier. And then he got Kruder. They also would get Paco Martin and Stottlemyre would later get Randy Velarde. And then Velarde again, Tim Salmon. And Stoudemire would strike out six tonight. Seven shutout innings. As he gave the Angels just one run through eight innings last Wednesday in a victory. Steve, I don't believe it was so much only the six strikeouts. I just thought Todd tonight had great command of everything he wanted to do. A couple times he lost a little bit of his command. But he had great command. I'll tell you something. I've seen him enough when he was at Toronto. He's an unbelievable competitor. He's one of those people you want on your team because he's going to give you a fight. He's not going to run and hide. He'll be there and he's going to give you a fight. Now, I don't know how much more you can ask somebody. Swing and a miss. And that's back-to-back -back strikeouts of Gloss and Bachman. You're right, Todd Stottlemyre had a uh, stat earlier. 16 of the first 18 batters he faced, he threw first pitch strikes to. Again, right after a ball game, the Fox Sports News, all the scores and highlights from around the major leagues. Cal Ripken, he was back in the lineup tonight. We'll have that story. But Baltimore was beaten by maybe this year's Cy Young champion in the American League. Here's Reggie Williams. 
Fastball stays high. Johnny Oates got a brilliant performance by Stoudemire. He also got 14 hits, nine runs from his Rangers. Fastball stays low. But these Rangers, after going through Anaheim, have to go to Seattle. In the Kingdom, they've won just six times in the last 31 tries since 1992. But I will say this, that was against some pretty good Seattle ball clubs. Well, I'll tell you what, though. With six to play, it's no picnic for either side. You have to be fair both ways. It's no picnic. And there's nothing that's going to be over until that last series. Reggie Williams works the two-out walk. And Randy Villardi will step up. Your Toronto Blues, your Detroit Tigers against the Toronto Blue Jays went right down to the wire. Yeah, we had to beat them three straight when we were at home and uh, we beat them the last, or well, all three were one run games, but we beat them the last one, one to nothing, Frank Canana. And you talk about a man that didn't have a heartbeat. I didn't have a heartbeat. <laughs> I mean, the emotions have to be unbelievable. Right? I had no heartbeat. People say, were you afraid? I said I was beyond. I was that complete fear that you see in a horror you know, movie. You're a lot of noise. I've uh, seen you in that clubhouse. Yeah, you, you might have seen the me acting. On the bench kind of with sure. a smile on your face. Yeah, uh-huh. Popping that gel you sell <laughs> in your mouth. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Gosh, you know something you brought up there? I, this is the truth. I have not had over two in the last three years. Really? And I used to put as many as 20 to 30 in me. So don't, <laughs> don't tell me. I know what it's like. Both of these guys. Johnny Oates for Texas. Terry Collins for Anaheim. And Velarde takes a strike at the knees. That's why, as a manager, I might sound crazy to people. I have so much respect for John and for Terry. I know what they're going through. I know that agony. And I know that competitiveness which they have to want to win. And it's, it's hard. Just like right now, John's got nine runs. He's still worried. Two balls, two strikes. The ball got away from Rodriguez, but no reason for Williams to go anywhere. Xavier Hernandez struck out the first two angels he faced in the bottom of the ninth inning in Gloss and Bachman. Williams then worked the walk. Now the count is two and two on Randy Velarde, who has doubled or start his at-bats in this game back in the first inning and grounded out and struck out twice, both times against Stottlemyre, who is the Rangers' star tonight. Low three and two. Xavier's just got to throw it over the plate. I, I don't understand. I, I never will. I mean, belt high, down the middle, and tell me, hit it as far as you can hit it. That was Johnny saying, why is he throwing yeah. his split finger now? That's what he's saying. What is going on? smokes it towards left field and that ball will drop the angels will score tonight as williams comes around to score in the double by randy velarde it is nine to one well he threw one right down broadway that's fine yep you know that ball there that he hit could have been at the left fielder who cares So Jim Medlin will come up. The Angels down by eight runs. You're right. Now he's checking his lineup. He's worrying a little bit. 
well, you not that top one. I know. I'm just you know, I uh, had two outs here right in this ballpark. 12 to 5 lead, two outs and one man on. And the umpire missed the band on was a double play at first, and he missed the call. But I didn't, I, you know, I didn't bother to argue. The score was 12 to 7. When I went up the runway, after the game ended, it was 13-12, their favorite. They scored eight runs with two outs and one man on. August, that is a true story. August 29th, 1986. And Gene Mock was the manager. Dick Schofield hit a grand slam off of Willie Hernandez to the screwball, which he stayed right up there. i never forget I can see it now. He hit that baby, and I got up and started to walk. And when I got back to the hotel, I told my wife, go ahead and get a pen and stick it anywhere you want in me, because I'm numb. I said, it don't matter. Sparky, there is a Hernandez pitching right now. <laughs> That's right. Xavier. The Angels won the West that 1986 season, the last time they won the division. Now Edmund pulls it to second. Not tonight, but still two more to play. Tomorrow night against these Rangers, and again on Wednesday. The first round goes to Texas by a final score of 9-1. to one. So Juan Gonzalez gets two more RBIs to push his season total to 156. The final score, Texas 9, the Angels 1. So for Sparky Anderson, I'm Steve Fiziak saying so long from Edison International Field. Be sure to join us tomorrow night as the Angels take on Juan Gonzalez and the Texas Rangers at 6.30 from Edison International Field. You've been watching Anaheim Angels coverage on Fox Sports West, your home of Fox Sports Net. Now we take you to the Fox Network Center for Fox Sports News Prime Time.